Okay, let's move on to the subject matter today, which is the existence of time. And what I'm going to do today, I'm going to start my lecture with a little um, magic trick. Okay, so I hope you're ready for this. Okay, I'm going to perform a magic trick that's never been done in the history of humanity. Okay, you've seen it here first. Okay, I'm going to make time disappear. Now, how's that for a magic trick? Okay, you've seen it here first, or maybe you did not see it because there's not going to be much to see. Okay, but bear with me okay uh this is my hat my top hat okay and i'm gonna first to show that you know i am a magician because you got to show your credentials up front okay what i'm going to do is what every magician has to learn the first day of class and that is you have to make a rabbit disappear okay so so first thing you got to do as a magician is know how to make a rabbit disappear if you can't do that you're not a magician okay that's like the abcs okay so i show the hat you see there's nothing in there okay Okay, and I take my rabbit, okay, here, hold still, bunny, shaking there, you know, uh, you know, you ask, why do I grab the bunny by the ears, his name is Bugs, by the way, uh, because, uh, you know, that's the best way to handle a rabbit, they scratch, they kick around, hold on, bunny, okay, here, let's put him in there, okay, 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 easy now, easy now, I'm gonna make you disappear now, okay, don't, don't get excited, okay, so here goes, abracadabra, Chupacabra, voila! The rabbit disappeared. Okay? No more rabbit. Okay, having done that trick, now let's move to the real trick. I'm gonna make time disappear. Okay? Next trick. So there's nothing in there. Okay? I hope you can see there's nothing in there. Okay? I'm gonna grab a little bit of time here. Got a lot of time on my hand. Okay? Pour it in there. I sprinkled it. Okay? And I say, a la peanut butter sandwich. Shazam. And time disappeared. Okay? Yeah, these are great tricks. But, um, you know, what I found over the years is that it's pretty easy to make um, things disappear. Especially if they're not there to begin with. You know, but the other thing I learned and that a lot of magicians will agree with me is that, you know, you can make a rabbit reappear. You know, you, you can make them disappear, now you make them appear. Yeah, you can make them reappear. You know, I, I, for example, I can take the rabbit and even turn them into a clock if I want, okay? I can turn them into an elephant. Once you know the trick, you know, can turn them into anything. I mean, you've seen it probably with other magicians as well. They take a little animal, or, you know, maybe a rabbit, and they produce an elephant on stage. That's easy to do. What I've never seen, and you'll never see, because I haven't learned how to do that yet, is to make time reappear. Once time disappears, you know, I, I don't know the trick to make it reappear like I would with a rabbit. So all I can tell you is that um, I'm working on it and whenever I find out a way of making time reappear, I will perform the trick here on stage directly to you, okay? But as of today, I don't know anyone who can make time reappear, okay? Okay, having said that, let's do a little recap of what we did these days, these last few days, and we went over distance started with distance and find out that we have distance traveled, which belongs to math, not to physics, whereas distance separation belongs to physics and not to math because it's a qualitative concept. Okay, that's the first thing uh, we noticed. Uh, yeah, what is uh, distance traveled? Just amount traveled in a period of time. What is uh, distance for physics? Just separation, gap. Okay, that's all we see, the separation between two objects. Okay, uh, and in, in mathematics, Okay, mathematics as we call it. Distance traveled is equal to position, equal to displacement, equal to, equal to length. They're all dynamic concepts. All four of those are dynamic concepts. Not one of them is a static concept. Okay, I talked about that the other day, so you can look at the previous video. Velocity is equal to speed plus direction. The problem with that is that direction belongs strictly to physics. Direction is a qualitative concept. Uh, you know, a mathematician can't put direction and put it in an equation. What's he going to do with it? Okay, so you can't use direction in uh, mathematics. And yet, you know, when they talk about velocity, they talk about direction. In fact, you won't hear very much the uh, term velocity of light. Usually they talk about the speed of light. Okay, because uh, if it's velocity of light, it turns the corner, and now the question is, has it accelerated? And people say, well, no, all it did is change direction. 
Yeah, but direction belongs to physics, first of all. And second, I showed the other day that you still have this uh, centripetal motion, acceleration, and that's called acceleration. And the way they calculate velocity, which is a single point in space and time, meaning single location, meaning a cross section of time, is by uh, performing uh, the derivative, you know, by going, by calculating it. So we don't have a value, we don't have a measured value really for velocity. It's calculated, even with the little old device that you use to measure that. Okay, um, and then we went to time. We started time the other day, and we have, uh, what is time? Distance traveled divided by speed. But you have to add direction because, remember, uh, they say that time moves forward. Moves forward. Is forward a direction? I mean, you know, is my forward the same as your forward? Is my uh, time going in that direction and yours is coming in my direction? What direction does time flow? Is there a flow of time? Uh, is, there, is there something flowing like a river? You know, so what happens is that uh, in physics, uh, we don't use the word time at all, except when we talk about before and after, earlier, later, yesterday and tomorrow in the sense of just, you know, uh, sequential time. Other than that, qualitative time. Other than that, we have no use for time at all. We don't use time in physics. Okay? Time is strictly a word that belongs to mathematics. Okay? seconds and all that stuff. We don't care about that in physics because in physics, we're only going to explain a mechanism and we have no use for seconds or minutes or years to explain a mechanism. Okay. Uh, we don't talk about a year. We talk about an orbit, maybe, you know, uh, planet uh, orbits the sun. We say one orbit, two orbits. That's fine with us. Okay. We don't need really seconds and minutes. Okay. So uh, what do we have? Well, in um, in physics, what they've put there, distance travel divided by speed, that's just motion divided by motion. In other words, what you have is a comparison of two motions, and that is the definition that we have for time. Now, it turns out that um, uh, in uh, mathematical physics, what these people do is they turn time into a physical object. Okay? And what they do with time, they stretch it, they slow it down, they speed it up, they talk about flowing, that flows, they talk about warping it, They're talk they talk about traveling through time, like if time were a medium. So in mathematical physics, they treat at all times, when they give a physical interpretation, they always treat time as a physical object, as a substance, as a medium, as a thing. Okay? And so they do their presentation. You ask them at the end, you know, the reporter, they say, okay, uh, are you saying that at the end of the presentation, right? Are you saying that time is a physical object, that it's a medium, it's a substance? Well, of course not. Uh, what did you think of that? I mean, you're taking all the analogies too literally. And you say, well, hold it, then what was the purpose of the analogy if you were giving me a physical interpretation saying that the Earth doesn't fly out of the solar system because time is warped and the skin of the Earth comes up against the warpage of time and that's preventing the Earth from flying out. That's the analogy you gave me. You treated time as a physical object. When I ask, is time really a physical object like a wall? And you say, no, you're taking the analogy too literally. Well, then what was the purpose of the analogy? I mean, is time a physical object or not? And it turns out for the physical interpretations, time is always an object. But when you put the mathematicians against the ropes and begin pummeling him with questions, that's when he says, well, of course time is not an object. And so we have this circular argument, this contradiction, this duality, as uh, mathematicians like to call them. Okay? And here's a proof, evidence, okay, that that is the case. Here we have Mr. Brian Greene. And he had a little show, uh, I think it was 2004. And uh, in that show, uh, Fabric of the Cosmos, he talked about time in the second installment. And there were like three installments. The second one dealt with time. And this is what he says, okay? This is what, what Mr. Green, okay? Uh, well, who, I don't know what planet he comes from because he says all these things that you, you would think uh, do not come from an intelligent person at all, okay? He says, contrary to everyday experience, time may not flow at all. He was talking about flow. He says, time doesn't flow, but what he does next, he freezes the river, okay? And um, he says, no, uh, it, it doesn't flow because it's solid. <laughs> so he turns it into a physical object anyways. Then he says, it turns out that time itself can be sp uh, speeded up or slowed down. Gravity can pull on time, slowing its passage. So you can see all these statements t treat time as a physical object. He talks about the direction of time. What's the direction? Forward. That's the way, that's the direction in which it moves. He talks about the arrow of time, again, giving it direction, giving it this forward direction. And he ends his presentation by saying that the future exists. He talks about the existence of time. So now we have a little bit, bit of problem because 
every one of these statements show that he's treating it as a physical object. And of course, when uh, you confront him and you say, well, hold it, uh, Brian, are you saying that time is a physical object? It flows. You can bend it. You can warp it. You can uh, stretch it. You can make it go faster or slower. It's a medium through which you travel. Uh, you're treating it as a physical object. And so let's make sure that that's what he's saying. So here's, here's a summary of what he said there. Okay. These are the different things. He says time flows, okay, or is fl uh, it's a river that's frozen, one of the two, because he walks on this frozen river later on. Time is a structure, but let's look at flow first. Here, here's what he says about um, the flowing river, okay? He says, like a river, time seems to flow endlessly from one moment to the next, and the flow of time seems to always be in one direction, towards the future. Oh, which in which direction does the future, uh, is the future? That's what I'd like to know. I mean, can he point to the future? Okay, so this is the problem. He treats it like a river. He says it's, um, it's, uh, it flows. Then he says, well, we can freeze it, and maybe time is more like a frozen river where the future and the past exist, and we walk towards the future, meaning it's got direction. Okay, so, so yeah, he's treating it as a physical object. It's not that um, I want to make sure people don't conclude that I'm inventing all this stuff. Then he says time is equal to a structure, and here's uh, his comment on that. He says uh, time is some kind of thingy. Okay, he says... Um, See, if we started here, so with the discovery of this unexpected link between space and time, and it says they're fused together into a four-dimensional what? Structure called space-time. He thinks it's a structure, and he says it's a four-dimensional, meaning you cannot even imagine this structure, but he does talk about structure of space-time, okay? And so the, the, the question here is, uh, he's saying, he's using it as a physical object, and then if you put him against the wall and say, well, are you saying that time is a physical object? Of course, he'll deny it, but here he's using it as a physical object. So is time a physical object or not? I mean, it's black or white. Either it is or not. If, if it's not, then what is the purpose of the analogy of using all these analogies? He says it's a warp by gravity, this thing. Okay, here it is. Here's the, his statement on how gravity warps time, meaning, you know, like you warp a hammock when you sit on it. Okay, that's how he's treating time here. Okay, here it is. He says, uh, well, let's see where it starts here. Give it a second. Starts here, says, Einstein's theory showed that gravity, like motion, can affect time. Great. Okay, and he says, it's as if gravity can pull on time, slowing its passage. Okay, the stronger the gravitational pull, the more time slows. If you could travel to a black hole, the effect of gravity on time would be huge. Okay, so what is he saying? He's saying there's a concept called gravity, and this concept has the ability to affect time physically, because he's talking about slowing time down. I didn't even know that time was speeding up or going fast or going anywhere. And here this guy is saying, look, if time is going fast, don't worry. Just put a little gravity in there, sprinkle it in there like I did you know, today with my top hat, and you can slow it down. Okay, so this is what, what these folks are saying. And so you're saying, well, you know, uh, are they giving you a figure of speech or something? Or is this an analogy, a simile? What is this? What kind of physical interpretation is this to say that gravity slows time down? Is, is time running fast? Okay. And, uh, and then he ends this thing saying time exists. How can time exist? Here he says, give it a second here. We'll go from the start. <clears throat> and he looks like a little choir boy, uh, you know, from the monastery. Once we know that your now can be what I consider the past or your now can be what I consider the future. And your now is every bit as valid as my now. Okay. Then we learn that the past must be real, the future must be real, they could be your now. <laughs> I like his faces because he looks like a born-again mathematician. He said they all exist. Past, present, and future, all equally real, they all exist. So he's saying that time exists. That's what he's saying. He's saying the past, present, and future in this uh, big, um, what is it, block universe that uh, these people like to talk about, he says time exists. That's what that block universe is. It's a single chunk of frozen water. It's not flowing. And you can find the future and the past all in that block. And all you have to do, of course, is if you want to travel to the future, just take your, uh, what is it, your rocket and somehow reach that destination in the future. This is what these people are saying. Okay. Okay. Um, so does he treat it as a physical object? Of course he does. In every statement that he's got in that video, and, and he's not the only one, by the way, I'm picking on him, but they're all the same. They all tell you that time is a thing. They treat it as a thing, you know, and so you say, well, is time a thing? What if we ask people out there, what do they think the time is? How would they define it? What notions do people have of time? 
So we did the core and found out, you know, but before that, you know, to compare, we have Mr. Um, St. Augustine, and he says, what then is time? He said this in the year 400, or there about 397, 400 AD. He says, what then is time? If no one asks me, I know what it is, <laughs> okay? If I wish to explain it to him who asked, I do not know. And here we are, what is it, 16, 1700 years later, and people still don't have any idea what time is. These are some of the answers in Quora. There were a hundred, so I didn't get them all. <laughs> but you can see some of the first ones that are out there. It says, time is motion, one fellow says. Another one says, the interval between successive events. Another one says, no one can exactly describe time as such. Another one says, we literally don't know what time is. Another one repeats the first one, says, detectable, measurable change. Another one says, there is no agreed definition of time. And the other one finally says, time is what a clock measures. Anyone who claims to know any more than this is either lying or deluded. <laughs> okay, so those are the notions of time. Do we have any idea what time is? Of course not. None of these people have any idea what time is because they try to define it in terms of their religion. When you introduce religion, you want to hold on to your religion, you're going to end up with lousy definitions. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, so we ask the question. These are the, this is the only real important question, the, these two questions. Okay, the first one. Is time an object? Okay. Is time a physical object? Is time a thing? And, you know, those are synonyms so that you don't use that in the definition if you're going to define it. You can't use the word entity, medium, substance, structure, any of those, because those are synonyms of thing. Okay? So you can't use those words. It, but is it a thing? Is time a thing? And for that, you know, you need to define what a thing is so that you can answer that question. And the other one is, does time exist? Okay? Can we say that time exists? And a lot of people would say that time is not a thing, but time exists. <laughs> that would be their, I think the majority of people, 90% of the people out there at least would answer that question that way. They would say, time is not an object, okay, but time exists. <laughs> That's what I think people would answer. Okay, so let's find out what an object is, because we need to find out what an object is to be able to answer the question. Before we can answer whether time is an object, we need to find out what an object is. So let's make sure we at least eliminate it as an object, scientifically, okay? So here, let's eliminate it completely, okay? An object that which has shape. Okay, you don't like the definition? No problem. You come up with a better mousetrap. That's your job. You know, you got to find out what's wrong with this definition, what's good about yours. Otherwise, this definition sticks. Okay? And, you know, no, we don't use um, tradition. We don't raise our hands and vote. That's not the way it works in science. We don't say, well, this is the way we've always done it. This is what every person on earth believes that an object is. We don't care about any of that. This is what we've, I found in the dictionary and copied and pasted. None of that is scientific. No, in science, we, we defend our definition. We put a definition up there. You don't like it, put a better one up there. And show what's wrong with this one and put yours and show what's good about yours. That's the way it works. Shape is the only universal property of objects. All objects have shape. Okay? There is no object you can imagine that does not have shape. So it's a universal property, and that's a good point to define the word object in terms of shape, okay? And uh, we have the golden principle of physics. You can't do physics without an object because physics requires an object. What would there be to study if, or, or analyze or anything if there were no objects in the universe? If all we had was empty space, okay? So you have to have some object for a phenomenon to happen. It is irrational to use concepts as objects in physics, known as the fallacy of reification. You cannot use a concept like love and turn it into a heart or take intelligence and turn it into a brain, or take grace and turn it into God or whatever. Okay, you can't do that, not in physics. In ordinary speech, you can get away with all that stuff. It's in physics, in science, that you can't do that, okay? In ordinary speech, you can say whatever you want. Okay, if time is deemed to be a concept, okay, this word cannot be used as an object in the course of a physical interpretation, okay? So if time is an object under that definition, shape, well, all you have to tell me is what does time look like? You should be able to draw it. Okay, if you, if you think that time has shape, if time does not have shape, we have rejected it officially, scientifically, as, a, um, as, a, as an object. It stays as a concept. There are only two possibilities. Every word in the dictionary is either an object or a concept. If it's not an object because time does not have shape, we're done. We're finished, okay? Uh, time is not an object. Okay, according to that definition, he who doesn't like the definition has to come up with a better mousetrap. Again, has to defend his definition and show what's wrong with this one. That's it. That's all they got to do. Very simple, actually, right? Okay, and uh, so the next issue is existence. Okay, does time exist? Okay, and so here we have a sequence of definitions that we need to answer that question. The first one is, what is an object? An object is that which has shape. What is distance? Well, it's separation between two objects. What is location? It's a set of distances from one object to all the rest. 
in the system or in the world or in the universe, right? And uh, what is a concept? It's a word that invokes or embodies two objects. You need two objects, a relation between two objects to have a concept. So either every word in the dictionary is either a concept, meaning that you have a relation there between made by a human, obviously, usually, right? I mean, a lion, I guess, can have concepts in his mind to some degree, right? And the opposite is the object. And the best way to look at that is, does it have shape? Does it not have shape? If it has shape, it's an object. We're done. If it doesn't have shape, it's a concept. We're done as well, okay? And so what does exist? Well, the definition is physical presence, okay? What is uh, physical stands for object. What is presence? For location. It's an object that has location. What was location? The set of distances to all other objects. Then we can say that the object exists. And as you can see, uh, concepts are not allowed to exist. No concept can be said to exist in physics. In, order, in ordinary speech, you can say that love exists. We don't care about that. That's religion. That's just, you know, nonsense talk. In physics, only objects can be said to exist. And in order to exist, they have to have uh, location with respect to other objects. So if you are imagining a table, that table is an object because it has shape. But it has no distance with respect to any other object because it's an imaginary table. Okay? So let's keep the right context there in mind. Okay, so we have a definition for exist. And again, you don't have to agree with any of these definitions. If you don't like them, you have only one recourse, and that's to get inside the ring with your shield, with your sword, fight for your definition, and show what's wrong with these definitions, either individually or as a whole. Okay, so uh, what do we conclude here? We would say time is not an object because time does not have shape. Uh, shape of a concept? Irrational. No concept has shape. And time does not have location, <laughs> first because it's not an object, and so you can't have, it's a concept, and then second, you know, concepts don't have shape, so you can't establish a distance with respect to anything, therefore it does not have location, okay? Because location is a set of distances. What are the conclusions? Time is not an object. Time has no location, time is a concept, and pursuant to the definition of exist that you see up there, time does not exist in physics. In ordinary speech and religion, you can say whatever you want. You can say God exists. In, uh, if you're going to talk rationally, you're going to talk in the world of science, if you want to step over the line into physics, and that's what you do when you use the word exist in any way, shape, or form, then if you want to show that, you know, your theory, you want to prove your theory, you want people to believe in your theory, Hey, come over here. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of your definitions first. And if you don't have a good definition for exist that you can match against these, well, you got to accept these definitions. Otherwise, you got to come up with a better mousetrap. And so you can say, well, I believe that God exists. Mm, yeah, or the other guy might say, I don't believe that God exists. Well, you haven't said anything until you define exist, let alone God. So we need to define the word exist. Then we can figure out whether God exists or not. And the same thing with time. Does time exist? Well, what do you mean by exist? What do you mean? Is time an object? What do you mean by object? So first we need to define the words object and exist. Then we can use the terms consistently in our dissertation and say time is an object or time is not an object. Time exists or time does not exist. We can say it because now we have definitions that we can, you know, stand upon. We have laid the foundations to be able to talk about time in a rational manner okay, to another human being. Okay, so here are some cor corollaries, okay, from these definitions. Okay, here it is. Objects we point to because they have shape. You should be able to point to an object even the one in your head, because all you have to do is draw what you have in your head outside, and then you can point to what you were thinking of. So you can present that to a jury. You can present that to a, um, in a conference. You can say, well, what are you thinking of? What do you think light is? Well, I think this is light. You can show them what you think it is. Maybe a series of particles, maybe a wave, <laughs> or maybe a rope, right? Concepts we define. So if you can define it, it's not an object. Okay, let's repeat that, because that goes through a lot of people's head and then out the other door, right? Concepts we define. If you can define a word, it's not an object. It can't be an object. Objects we point to. In physics, in science, in uh, ordinary speech, you can do whatever you want. Not important at all. We're talking about science here. Objects you should be able to point to because the only property all objects have, the universal property, is shape. Do they exist? Well, if it has location, now it exists by definition. Not because you believe or stop believing, but because by definition, okay, it has location. And then if you can define the word time, then time is a concept. And yeah, we're going to try to define the word time, but here's uh, some more corollaries. If you have more rational definition for these strategic terms, don't copy and paste definitions you find in dictionaries of ordinary speech. This just means that you haven't challenged or understood these definitions. 
and accepted them rather on the basis of authority, tradition, and democracy, meaning majority vote. You're just looking uh, uh, behind you to find out if all these mathematicians, mathematicians are behind you and stand behind you. I don't care if the whole 8 billion people stand behind you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make it right. You can all be flat earthers and it doesn't make the earth flat. Okay? You are doing religion. That's what you're doing. And proponents must defend the rationale behind their proposals. In other words, you got to get in the ring with your shield and sword and fight like a man. Okay? Don't be a coward. Don't run away. Don't tell me this is what they told you. This is what, how they educated you, that you found it in a dictionary, that everybody believes in your definition. None of that matters. The only way is to get inside the ring, attack the definitions you saw there, and defend the ones you have. That's the only way. There is no other way. So don't look behind you. There's no one else in this island except you and me. Okay? <laughs> There's no, one <laughs> no one's going to back you up. And if they do, it's irrelevant anyways. Okay, so one fellow gave, gave uh, time a try. Okay? He says, the definition of time, time is change, he says, or the interval over which change occurs. Uh -huh. If a system is unchanging, it is timeless. Okay? We only need something that repeats predictably to have a measurement of time. Okay, that's why not all the errors this fellow made. He made so many errors only in, in, in that small piece of uh, you know, series, sequence of statements. Here are the, the uh, errors with all that. Okay? Interval is a synonym of time. Okay? What is an interval? You look it up, an intervening period of time. So you can't use the word interval to define time. Change is equal to motion. But motion is not equal to time. They're not synonyms. Motion and time are a little bit different. Okay? Time requires more than just change. So far, all you have is motion, and time requires memory. Motion does not. Move, you move by definition. You have two locations. Okay? You don't have to memorize the previous one. All you have to do is, by definition, you have to have two locations. But uh, time, you have to have a comparison of two motions. You have to memorize your origin of each one of the objects that you're comparing. Okay? Or you could have even you know, uh, the same object uh, compared to a, uh, a, another uh, chunk of uh, itinerary for that same object. But you're comparing essentially two objects even when you do that. So what you're doing is comparing two motions. And for that, you need to memorize the origin of those two motions and compare them later on, you know, when you finally reach the end of those two motions and you're comparing them. And yeah, so um, here's, a, here's a clear definition of time, okay? And it's, uh, we have qualitative time, a relation established between two locations of an object or between the trajectories of two objects. Okay, there you see what it is, okay? Um, what you see is the Earth going around the sun. That's uh, how they more or less established the first second or one of the first seconds. They had several seconds throughout history, okay, several ways of measuring it. But it had to do with the orbit of the Earth around the sun. And what are we doing when we talk about a second? Well, uh, originally, right, because today we have a different standard for the second. But for many centuries, what we had is that the second was essentially the movement of um, the hand on the clock, or it could be any other uh, motion, compared against the uh, motion of the Earth around the sun. What they did was they took the orbit of the Earth and chopped it up into days and then into uh, hours and minutes and seconds, and they ended up with the second. And we built our clocks based on that. And we said, okay, when that hand on the clock moves from one tick to the other, the Earth went 30 kilometers around the sun. That's essentially what a second is, the comparison of two motions. Okay. Now you have the quantitative time that mathematics use. Okay. We don't care about that. You can read it later on. But that essentially uh, gives you an idea of what uh, time is conceptually. From a conceptual point of view, it's a comparison of two motions, and for that you absolutely need memory. Okay? You can't do time without memory. Okay, incidentally, let me point out a couple issues here. What is the uh, CGS, the centimeter gram uh, second metric system, or you can call it also the kilogram meter, uh, meter kilogram second system? Second doesn't change. What changes is the meter of the kilo only. Okay, but, uh, you know, when you have a meter, like, you know, here, here I have a meter, okay? Let me take this out of here so you can see it better. Okay. Here you have a meter, well, uh, just a measuring stick, okay? And, uh, or you have this, you know, the, uh, the to measure, um, you know, whatever you want, any meters or whatever, but you have a, a standard called a meter. Once you have that standard, you can put that standard anywhere you want, okay? Because it's a physical standard. And for the kilogram, the same thing. You have a chunk of whatever. You know, you can have a chunk of lead, and you can call it the meter. You can call it the center. Uh, I'm sorry. You can call it the kilogram or the gram, or you can call it, uh, you know, maybe in the land of the Klingons, they call it the X. 
whatever that unit is, you have a chunk of something. And that's going to be your standard because you arbitrarily designated that as your standard. But for the second, we have no physical object. Okay, there is no physical. What are you measuring? Okay, this is the issue. There's no physical object when you're measuring when you're measuring time. Okay, uh, time is actually calculated again originally as a uh, segment or piece of the orbit of the Earth. And today they do it with a cesium uh, uh, wavelength, right? But uh, essentially you're measuring. That's it. But it, but there's no physical standard for time. Whereas you have a physical standard for the meter and you have a physical standard for the kilogram, which are the three main ones for the uh, metric system, the foundation. Okay, and uh, because these people never define their terms, you know, these mathematicians, they don't know what time is, but they use it. They tell you that they bend time, that they warp it, that they um, travel through it, that uh, they can make it go slow or fast depending on how much gravity there is or mass or whatever. And because they, they have all these, uh, they never define time, but they use it, and they tell you that can, they treat it as a physical object, and they take back everything they said at the end of the story and say, well, no, time is not a physical object, then you don't know what to think. They, they have all these weird things. But it turns out that one of the things that the mathematicians tell you is that um, the universe is expanding. Why? Because you have this big bang that happened 13.7 or 8 uh, billion years ago, and since then there's been this expansion. The expansion of what? What's been expanding? Well, the universe has been expanding and is expanding. That's what they tell you. And then in another context, they tell you the uh, universe is infinite. Space is infinite. Time is infinite. I mean, where does time end? Uh, doesn't time continue forever? And they say, well, the universe is infinite. They like to say that, like saying, you know, they leave it be beyond your comprehension. That's why they use the word infinite. So they say, here's infinity, you know, time expanding. And it turns out that here you have infinity expanding. This is so weird because uh, we have a contradiction there. Okay, we have, this is their logic. The universe is infinite. Nothing is outside of space, okay? meaning it's really finite, but they say it's infinite, uh, but it's a wrong question to ask what's outside of space or space time. And then they tell you that uh, uh, this infinity is expanding. And uh, what is pushing it outwards? Well, it's uh, this thingy called dark energy. What is preventing it from expanding faster? Well, it's this pull of gravity, which they call dark matter. So we have dark matter fighting against dark energy. Dark matter pulls inwards, and the universe wants to expand against what? Against nothing, because it's infinite. And we have this infinity that's expanding, time which is expanding. You figure it out.